Papa, please have a help. I went up with a couple of friends last night. This morning I had messages off her boyfriend. I love you so much and it hurts. And what's his name? Tony Lowe. For a bit now I've been thinking that I'm going to end up losing you. What's your friend's name? Catherine Smith. Everything keeps going through my head. Mad thoughts. And what did he say on the text? He has killed her. Please! Yeah, come through. Stay up there, all right? Yeah, There's a dog here as well. Yeah, come on, let's get the dog out first. Come on, boy. We've got a code blue here. Um, uh, extensive bleeding, injuries to the head. There is a knife protruding from the side. We are looking at the murder scene here. Twenty-six-year-old female reported deceased. Yeah, code blue, suspicious. A young mother, dead. The main suspect, her boyfriend of six weeks, is on the run. This is Code Blue, a real-life murder investigation captured in real time as it unfolds. A well, murder for me is the most heinous crime there is. That ripple will be there. The impact on the family, the friends. We need to get get somebody in there as quickly as possible so the family are hearing from the police. Collectively, there is that one, one objective and everybody is committed and dedicated to get justice for, for those families. Detectives know the best chance of catching a killer is within the first 48 hours and the clock is running. The important thing for me is to get that evidence at the earliest opportunity. Uh, forensically, certainly, things can be lost if we don't respond quickly. So the sooner we do things, the better, right the way throughout. Right, everybody, sorry, we'll have a quick briefing now, if you don't mind. Initial reporting from the scene is that Catherine Smith, the deceased, is lying on the floor there are a number of pillows in the vicinity, and I think she's also covered with some sort of duvet or sheet. We know that Lowe and Catherine Smith have been in a relationship for a few weeks. Whilst clearly the evidence at the moment points towards the fact that Anthony Lowe has murdered her and has fled, we can't be absolutely certain at this time, and until we have categorically proved that, we've got to keep an open mind. Clearly, number one priority is to identify and trace the suspect. Just be mindful of the risk. This is a potentially dangerous individual who, it would appear, has committed a murder. Let's just bear in mind the risk. Let's go out there and let's get justice for Catherine and for her family. The last three jobs that I've done have all been knife crime related. This one is a savage, brutal and frenzied attack on a vulnerable female. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you. Hi. From Major Crime Investigation Team. I notice you've got a camera there in the window. Is that working?
So as far as the body's concerned, what have we done? Just photographed it, uh, and videoed it, uh, and then Tim is doing 360 photography in there now. There's quite a bit of blood which is on the floor, which appears to be coming from some wound towards the front. Obviously, we haven't examined the lady, but uh, there's no attack site in a sense. There's no blood spatter that's that's become relevant or obvious at the moment. Okay. Uh, there is some sort of weapon which is in her left side. It's actually in, in her side, is it? In her side. Catherine was a uh, young mother. Um, she was uh, hard-working with her life in front of her, her hopes and dreams, uh, like, like anybody of that age. And it's one of the many reasons why we work so tirelessly to investigate a crime like this. The role of the family liaison officer is primarily that of an investigator, an investigator within the family. Um, very often part of that role will be to sensitively deliver some uh, very bad news to a family. We talk every day. And so I picked up the phone and rang it and it just kept on ringing and ringing. And I and it went to answer phone. And I said, that was really strange. I kept on phoning Catherine's phone all the time and I left horrible messages on the phone, but I didn't know. And I, I was phoning her friends to see if Anyone had heard from her? I saw three people coming towards us, and my words to them was, don't say anything has happened to her, and they just looked. And I just screamed the place down. I closed my eyes, and all I can see is Catherine trying to get to me. I'm a police officer from South Wales Police in Cardiff. Nothing to worry about at all. Um, have, you got, have you got a couple of minutes that you're able to speak to me? The suspect's phone is um, pinging a uh, location. 14.46 hours in the Avon and Somerset area. Right. Around Bristol. And then we also have, from the officer who was with the family at the scene at the time, um, some text screenshots of text messages between the suspect and the victim's mother. So from the suspect oh, to the family suspect. of deceased? Yeah. Can you please phone me? Why, what's up? Can't phone out or take calls. Right, Where... so the suspect is saying he can't phone out or take calls. Interesting. Yeah. OK. I think she's in the flat. We split up last night. OK, and that time's 12 or 5. 12 or 5. OK, thanks. She told me she... Is seeing, seeing someone, someone else. else. No, well, it's the first not. I've heard of that, but clearly they argued last night, and that could be a potential motive there. The wanted man is still sending text messages to Catherine's family. With his phone switched on, detectives can use the signal to track him. Who and I are going to go up and see her best friend now, oh, yeah. potentially, we go back there this afternoon, then, if we Yeah. Ten minutes ago, Clarence Road is pinged. So whether he's walking along, I think it's the 8370 Clarence Road, towards the direction of Temple Meads. That could also be very close to Clifton Suspension Bridge, yes, which is an iconic that, suicide yeah. site. Bear in mind his mental state. I'm looking at the point of making a call into him. Right. I want to as well. My only fear at the moment is, if we do, have we got any sort of wraparound around him, anybody in the area, the vicinity? If he says to you, for example, get off, I've had enough, I'm going, I'm going to top myself, are we going to have anybody in that area to be able to respond to that if necessary? Hiya. Do you see Kath Brown, South Wales Police? Yeah. Hiya. All right, thank you. Yeah, this is a... You know, it's a murder investigation which potentially is going to end up in court. All right, hey. 
Oh, dear. Come on. I'm sorry. No, it's OK. It's OK, right? You take your time, OK? We'll give you a few minutes, all right? And then we'll come and sit and have a chat, OK? Well, thanks. All right? You OK? Yeah. last activity on his phone was in Bristol so we've got staff deployed there we've got we've got our staff and we've got the region deployed yes I really don't know what we could be faced with over there so it's the more staff we've got on the ground to, to provide backup and support to the staff deployed and then almost to put a ring around him if we can locate that phone Super, sorry to interrupt you. I've got a WhatsApp of a message that the suspect has sent to the mother and it talks about him killing himself in it. Do you, I haven't read it yet. Do you want me to read this out yes, to you? Yes, please. You need to send the police to the flat because Kath is laying on the living room floor dead. Let the police go in first. I'm so sorry, but that won't make up for me killing your daughter. Well, it's bye from me. I'm off to end my life now. We've just had worrying information that the suspect has texted the mother of the deceased. Unfortunately, at 16.40, so an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes ago, saying what he's done, he needs the police to get to the address. He clearly doesn't know when we're aware of this at the moment, but he's threatening to end his life now. Given the, the latest content, the fact that he intends to take his life. I don't think we can wait any longer. If he was to do something now, yeah, we'd have the opportunity to stop. I think like, we'd be uh, kicking ourselves. Three calls have gone into the phone. Unfortunately, there's no reply at all now. It looks as if the phone may have been turned off, which is our worst, uh, worst fear, unfortunately. We desperately need to get answers from Lowe. This phone now not responding and the fact he's threatened to commit suicide, there's a real chance we may be too late. has gone on, there have been more police vehicles, there have been more officers coming in and out of that dawn. Detectives are investigating the murder of a young woman. Her body was found seven hours ago. Her older boyfriend is on the run and is the main suspect. They've tracked his phone to Bristol, but the signal has been lost. Three calls have gone into the phone. Unfortunately, there's no reply at all now. It looks as if the phone may have been turned off, which is our worst, uh, worst fear, unfortunately. A young woman, a young mother, dead, uh, and a possible perpetrator now on the loose. And the first thing we need to do is, is catch him. However, if he's ended his life, then we may never know what's happened. Oh, come in. This phone's got back up and running. Powered it back on, it down. and it's in uh, near the seafront in Western Supermare. What? Yeah. Blimey. We're back on. Yes. And he's desperate to make contact. He wants people to know, so we could phone him, and he could walk into the sea, and we'd have we'd be able to do nothing to stop him. If you look here on the map, it's. Uh, Is it bigger than the same location? No, it's gone to Western Supermare. That's what I mean. We have those start. That's why I'm saying, every, all the plans we had in place that were perfect. Bristol staff ready, tasers, negotiator. He's now in Western Supermare. Yeah, I make believe it or not, the, the bloody phone is pinged in Western Supermare now. Right. What I say is, make your way down there, but don't go directly to to to, to Western Supermare. Maybe just all meet up in the service station on the way down there. Um, wait for an order and we'll push you in from there. We're now going to head over to Western Supermare with the intention again of um, finding a suitable location, obviously keeping a lookout for the suspect. Nothing's changed apart from the location that we have.
we've got the mother's phone here with us. We've now physically got control of that phone. So that's a text now from him to her. Yeah. That's it, What's going on? Is she OK or not? Well, that would indicate he doesn't know she's dead. I mean, he's hoping and now, by the look of it, that she's possibly still alive. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But previously, he's been saying he's killed her. So is he having a... He's been thinking about it. He's more hopeful now that she might be alive, which is a way in, potentially, for negotiators. His phone appears to have been switched back on. We're closing in for certain. I've got a team of detectives heading towards Western Superman now. Uh, the next hour is going to be crucial. Just um, pretty much reached Western Supermare. Um, we are headed towards the Grand Pier with a view of obviously keeping observations out for this gentleman. Welcome, team. You okay? Right. So, I've been quite a few developments this afternoon. Um, it's been non stop, to be honest. What I've been told is that there is a knife still embedded in the victim at the scene. That is an, an orange knife. It's the blade of the knife. There's no handle. So, excuse everyone. Bye, Dave. OK. Where is he? Right, train station, mate. We've got eyeball on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can see, yeah, he got a station on the left. So where do you want us to stay? To car park across this corner. We have been able to get eyeball. Looks as if he's around the town hall area of Western Supermare. They're moving in as we speak, so... Uh, Fingers crossed we might have some really positive news very shortly. They're there or thereabouts already. The three plain clothes officers following him now. One in custody outside the entrance of the supermarket. Oh, come on. Right, fantastic. Great effort. That's great news. He's now been detained under arrest. Then he's now on his way back to South Wales. I'm preparing the press release now from the, from the family. They will be in disbelief. This can't be true. That this can't this can't have happened to us. It can't have happened to our loved one. It perhaps starts the realization that it is tragically real. Catherine will be sadly missed. We are shocked and cannot believe what has happened to her. Catherine was a loving daughter, granddaughter, sister, and friend. She will also be sorely missed by her daughter. Come on over. Hello. Is it Mr. Lowe, is it? Yeah, I've seen him before. OK. You've seen me before, have you? OK. Uh, Mr. Lowe's been arrested on suspicion of a murder. OK. Last time was 1958. OK. Eleven hours from the Code Blue call, the main suspect is in custody. Now, detectives need to build their case.
When you have a suspect who is on the run, your priority is to get hold of them, to locate them and arrest them as quickly as you can. Now we need answers. What happened in the flat last night? South Wales police have told LBC a man is being questioned on suspicion of murdering a 26-year-old woman in Cardiff. The body was found in the Ely area of the city. A 46-year-old suspect was detained in Western Supermare last night. Right, good to see you again. This is a, uh, a very violent murder that we're dealing with here. It's the murder of Catherine Smith. And we do have Anthony Lowe, her boyfriend, in custody. We are aware that the suspect and deceased spent the evening with family and friends uh, at the Skittles Alley in Tonguinlice. So obviously we've made inquiries there. Indication is that they left in the car together, as we understand it, to the home address at Heel July. And that obviously all ties in in terms of timing and the CCTV. Eight o'clock last night update from the scene from the pathologist. There was at least, and these are provisional numbers, at least eight stab wounds to the upper left chest. Numerous stab wounds to the both sides of the neck. A long cut behind the left ear going down to the neck. Three further stab wounds to the upper left back. And one stab wound to the lower right back. So I'll come to where we're going to go today now in terms of lines of inquiry and fast-track actions, antecedent history of the suspect, we look at intelligence, um, any DV history, offending history. Yeah, really busy yesterday. The focus was on obviously locating and arresting low. Whilst we've captured him now, the investigation still needs to continue. It needs that momentum and impetus and the staff are out carrying out those actions quickly now so that we can feed in to the interview team um, to make sure they're fully aware of what we've got. This interview is being video recorded. Tony, please, could you state your full name and date of birth for me, please? Yeah, Anthony John Lowe. Thank you, Anthony. You've been arrested for the murder of Catherine Smith. Did you kill Catherine? No comment. There's a prepared statement which I'll read out. I, Anthony John Lowe, say as follows. I met Catherine Smith on plenty of fish websites. Approximately seven to eight weeks ago, we started dating. Things progressed quickly, and after a week, we got engaged. We were arguing in the car. During the argument, Catherine took off her engagement ring and gave it to me. Super, how are we doing? He has provided a prepared statement which hasn't come as a surprise. However, the content of it, to be honest, has. We continued to argue at the flat. During this, she came towards me and on one occasion, she punched me to the right side of my face. I accept that I then headbutted her to the face, my head connecting with her nose and forehead. I saw she had blood coming from her nose. Some of that blood, I later discovered, had gone on my clothing. I grabbed the car keys, left the address, locking the door, which again is significant. I took the keys with me. I am not responsible for stabbing Catherine. I accept that I headbutted her after she had hit me, and as a result of the headbutt, she went to the floor. I did not assault her in any other way. I'm aware that another person has keys for the flat. Catherine had told me this previously, but refused to say who. I deny I murdered Catherine Smith. Signed and dated today. We do have a list of questions that we are going to make our way through. And we'll make a start on those. We believe, and I still do despite this, um, my working hypothesis is that he's murdered her and left the scene at that time. And more importantly, if he's headbutted her to the face with such force that she's fallen to the ground, there's no corresponding injuries that would match on her face or nose. Yeah, and is she bleeding from the nose? Is the important one because the doctor should be able to tell us that. But the, the ring being taken off, was it taken off by her and handed back in the car? Or, could be the case, was it taken from her after death by him? He's certainly still the suspect for me. There's no suggestion of any third party involvement, but we will have to uh, dig a bit deeper into some of these points we've just raised. Great, thanks, Jim. Great, thanks, Ross. It's always a, a, you know, a difficult 
a position to be in, to speak to the, the family uh, and to prov provide them with an update. We need to gain as much information from the family about Catherine, about her lifestyle, you know, her friends and her relationship with, uh, with Tony as well, you know, and what they can tell us. See the blue house? It's down with the blue house. Right, OK. Right, Dad, can you have a seat? Yeah. Am I OK to sit down? How are you doing? I'm a good day, I'm a bad day. Sorry, Dad, we have to meet under, under these tragic circumstances. It's, you know, it's, it's a horrific set of circumstances that, that you find yourselves in. We're still working through the pathology, but we, but we have an update that I can give you, if you so wish, mm -hmm. and which is, you know, the, um, up to this point, what we've, uh, what we've found um, and what we're able to tell you. So if, if you're happy that I'm able to, get, want to give you that. As a result of the, the post-mortem that's been conducted by uh, our home office pathologist, um, I'm able to say that, tragically, uh, Catherine sustained 33 stab wounds. But that's clearly that's where we are, and, and you know they were up to the uh, to the chest and to the back area, so that was and has eff um, affected her heart and her lungs. Okay, so that is likely to what you did. Prepare yourself to read on the interim death certificate, which you, you which you will, which you will receive. Right, as difficult as it is, I wanted to hear it from from me, the investigation team. Right, they're w immersed in this inquiry and they're all dedicated to be able to get justice and do their best for, for yourself and, and, and Catherine. Suspect Low is in custody. Initially, he suggested he'd, he was responsible for killing her. Now he's suggesting somebody else is. We've got to get to the bottom of this quickly. The custody clock is ticking. It's all about securing that conviction now. We're never going to be able to bring the deceased back. But the, what we can do for the family is make sure that we prosecute the offender, the person who we believe is responsible. Um, and if that helps them, gives them some comfort in any way at all, then I consider our job well done. While on the run, Tony Lowe contacted a number of ex-girlfriends. A specialist detective is on her way to meet one of them. The woman says she has information that could give an insight into Lowe's relationship with Catherine. They met on um, plentyoffish.com, which is, is a dating website. And with Tony Lowe, you know, he, he presented himself as a 36-year-old, when in, in reality he's 46. He gave his name as Tony Moore when his name is uh, Anthony Lowe. Um, he, he said he was and had interest in, in things that he didn't have interest in, um, and the persona he gave was false. So when Catherine met him, she was thought she was meeting somebody that, that wasn't actually the person she was going to meet, and the person she did meet was the person that ended up murdering her. So describe your relationship with him to me. Can you do that? Um, how can you explain it? Yeah, there was a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts. Yeah. Basically, I couldn't go anywhere on my own without him. Okay. If I wanted to go to the shops on my own and that, he wanted to come with me. Did you perceive that as normal in your relationship? I just thought it was normal okay. at first. But you know when, you know, like, if you're having a bath and stuff, you get coming in and out, you, I couldn't get away from him. I went on, I went on um, holiday and it, because he was overbearing, he wanted me to tell him I loved him. If it weren't once, it was a hundred times a day. And it ended up, he was just texting constantly, so I wouldn't re reply back to him. And then he just got aggressive. He'd say, um, 
that he's seen me with a bloke, and I've not been with a bloke. Um, he's seen me with a bloke, and I used to say to him, no, you're not right in the head, you. And you did mention him that you had a voice recording on yeah. your phone. Can you play that to us? Right, yes, this is... Well, you're not replying back to fuck, or you're too busy shagging your new boyfriend. What? You fucking whore. I swear to God, I'll see you soon, boy. Do you want to hear the next yes, one? Yes, please. Fat fucking slag, I'm going to fucking kill you. Really what we're looking to achieve is trying to track low, track the car that he's in, which is uh, Catherine's car, via AMPR and CCTV. You can get some times of the text that, that were sent, which are really important for us. And if we have the handset and an individual on CCTV at the same time the text is being sent, well, you can't get any better evidence than that. The team has had another breakthrough. They found the CCTV that might confirm Lowe was the one sending text messages admitting to the murder. So I'm looking at the CCTV in relation to the suspect. Um, this is showing him getting on a bus from Bath to, to Warminster. And you can see that uh, he now gets his mobile phone out of his pocket. and. Uh, appears to be sending a, a tax message which links in exactly with the, the timings that we've got on the, uh, the, the download of the tax messages which shows at 13.14 he uh, sent a tax message to the victim's family, to Catherine's family. The phone download we've had off Derby Smith. The Derby then stands Catherine's mother. You know Derby? You need to send the police to the flat because Kath is laying on the living floor dead. I'm not talking crap. My name is not Tony Moore. I'm not 36, I'm 47. And my name is Anthony John Lowe from Coventry. The police will have to kick the door in because I left the door keys in the car in Wiltshire. Let the police go in first, I'm sorry that won't make up for me killing your daughter. So all this on the phone, your phone number registered to you on the phone that was found in your possession when you were arrested. Do you have anything to say about that? Hello? Ed, you okay? Yeah, good, good super. You all right? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Right, you've got an update from the interviews, have you? Yeah, basically, um, we've done two interviews. Halfway through the second interview, he, he, he's, he looks really uncomfortable. He stopped answering all the questions. He just uh, puts his head down and refuses to even say no comment or acknowledge right. that the questions have been asked. He's a very cold, very, very cold, callous individual, boss. Yeah. Right. We've been going through the prepared statement. He talks about the fact that another person may, or he believes, had access to the flat with a set of keys. We've established that. Uh, all the flats are allocated with three sets of keys. Yeah. The family has no idea at all that any other sets of keys have been yeah. produced. So as far as we can tell, there's no outstanding keys at all. Where I'm thinking of going in the next interview, some sort of pathology and the keys then as well. Fantastic. OK. That's great. Thanks Cheers you. now. I'll uh, speak to you shortly. Thank Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Bye. Oh. Bye. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks again for returning. I know it's been another busy day, but uh, we'll try and whiz through this now. What is significant for September, there's, there's, there's still a group of friends from school, one being um, a guy by the name of... Rob Gulliford. Rob Gulliford, who lives in Surrey. And uh, Rob and Catherine were childhood sweethearts, first boyfriend, girlfriend, um, and have remained friends ever since, along with, with a, a few of them collectively, they're friends, and they keep in regular contact. On the 20th of September... Rob has sent a text message basically saying that he's coming down to, to Cardiff on the 9th and 13th of October and if anyone's around for them to meet up. After he sent the, the message out on the 20th of September, he's had a text message back off, off Catherine's phone saying she's already got a boyfriend um, and she loves him very much. The suggestion there then from him is that 
It's probably the suspect using the deceased phone, yeah. potentially. Yeah. Something to consider anyway. And potentially a bit aggrieved about this fact that she's had a text from a bloke. Reconnect with an old friend. Up. We were each other's first boyfriend, first girlfriend, sort of thing. First love sort of thing, was yeah. it? Yeah. I ended up breaking up with because she got bullied a lot in school. Right. And so did I. At the time, it was more of a case of... I always felt she was bullied for going out with me. She was completely armed. Never anything nasty. I think it was a couple months ago, we all went out. And with and Catherine? Drink. Yeah, Catherine was up. involved. And is it all the school friends that have got together? Yeah, that night she was texting me while we were in the group, like, not really talking about it in front of the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And texting me saying, I still love you and I want to get back with you. And I never understood why she loved me so much. I knew why I loved her. Catherine has told you she's been meeting up with other lads. Was that the cause of the row? Is that what made you so angry, Tony? She told me she's been meeting up with lads, so I lost it. Tell the police and ambulance to go round. If you need a break, Tony, please say it's not a problem. Do you need a break or do I have a break or you have to carry on? No, I'm fine, I'm just not speaking. Okay. So this meeting up with lads. You're mentioning the same question about fucking ten times here. Was she provoking you? And if she was provoking you, did she deserve what you've done to her? We're going to presume that he's taken of himself in the afternoon on his phone. Which afternoon? 27th or 28th? 27th. Right. Before uh, the offence then? Yeah. It's deleted. But we've recovered the video where he's talking about their relationships. He's gutted. He's upset. Oh. And he's wearing the same shirt that he's arrested in as well. Brilliant. Has he sent that anyway? I don't know if he recorded himself being yeah. upset. So There's an interview in, you know, with the writing on the walls? Yep. The pink, the pink walls? Yep. Uh, he's upset and uh, he's talking about uh, their relationship uh, could be over. Yep. The pink, the pink walls. So I'd like you to watch this. It's a, it's a short, uh, short video. You mean everything to me, babes. I mean that. I didn't know what love was till you walked into my life. And meeting you was the best thing that's ever happened to me. But for a bit now, I've been thinking that I'm going to end up losing you. I don't know why. Do you no. care at all? No comment. Is there any reason? I want you to stop saying, talk to my sister. OK, babes, I'll see you soon. I love you. Travel. The evidence is there. It's really clear cut. He said that the blood at the scene was accounted for by the fact he'd headbutted her and her nose was bleeding. The forensic evidence and the injuries to her would indicate that that's clearly not the case. Um, he's lied about how those injuries were caused. So clearly, it was his actions in terms of stabbing her a number of times that has uh, resulted in her death. And very shortly, and they'll phone me once it's done, we will be charging the suspect with murder. The decision to charge has come through uh, from the Crown Prosecution Service. The charge is that between the 26th of September 2017 and the 29th of September 2017 at Cardiff, yeah, you murdered Catherine Ann Smith, contrary to common law. Do you want to say anything to that charge? Okay. The important thing is that for for the general public and for the families that we, we do whatever we can to get justice.
a friend asked her, can you come and give me a hand? She'd be there. He just loved us so much. In our prayers now, we give thanks for Catherine's life and we ask God to comfort us in our loss. I would never be the mother's bride and would never be able to walk her down the aisle. He's taken such a, a, pers a special person away from me. She should never have been taken away from us like this. It's devastating. A, a bereavement is, is difficult enough, but to be a, a victim of um, murder within your family is, is, um, is quite devastating. It takes a particular t kind of individual to work within major crime because you've got to be, you have to be driven to deal not only with the worst possible incidents, but people's grief at the worst time of their lives. For anybody to lose uh, a family member or a friend um, in those circumstances must be horrendous. So it's doing all we can for them to support them through and ultimately to achieve the, the best outcome for them, which would be to find the killer and to ensure they're brought to justice. On behalf of the family, our hearts are broken and nothing in this life will ever mend that. We as a family feel a physical pain every day when we see her photograph or when a memory comes to the mind of Catherine and the wonderful life that we had with her. Statement from the father of Catherine's daughter. Our little girl has been robbed of her mummy. She will never have special moments to treasure or the opportunity to make new memories. She now believes Mummy is in the stars looking over her. It does tear you apart. You can't physically think of her not being here. I still set the table, is she was there. I can't, cannot think she's not there. From her perspective at the time, I don't see how there could have been any real obvious concern for her. Um, she didn't know his history. She didn't know um, what he'd done previously, the previous relationships she's had, and she, she didn't know the type of person he was. People are generally very trusting. Unfortunately, in our line of business, we, uh, we tend to be a little bit less trusting sometimes because we see this side of life more than, than most people do. She was obviously very smitten by this individual who can be um, very calculated and, uh, and dominant in, in how he, he, he dealt with her. And tragically, she, you know, she met her death, and the hands are low, and she didn't really know who he was. We're the ones that's doing the ashes today. Rest in peace, babes. This is you. We should never have to have done this. Never.